And let's call this entire expression equal to s for sophomore's dream. And then from here, we need to evaluate this integral. And we'll call this integral i. And i, to solve this, what we'll have to do is use integration by parts, essentially n times, so that we can get rid of this natural log function. And recall, the formula for integration by parts just comes out of the product rule for derivatives, so we have p prime times q plus q prime times p. And if we just integrate everything, if each of these are functions of x, we'll integrate with respect to x. And the integral of the derivative is just equal to the function. And here, we'll just put integral signs here. And now we just have to solve for one of these. We'll solve for this one. So the integral of p prime times q is equal to p times q minus the integral of q prime times p. This is really just a fast, non-rigorous way to derive this formula. So in our case, we want to get rid of this natural log of x to the nth power. So we want to take its derivative eventually n times, but we'll just take it one step at a time. And so we want it, this to be our q, since we can take q's derivative in this integral. So this will be our q, and this will be our p prime. So i is equal to the any derivative of p prime. So that's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times the natural log of nx, since it's just p times q, and then minus the integral from 0 to 1 of the derivative of this. So we'd use a chain rule, so it'd be n times the natural log to the n minus 1 power of x, and then multiplied by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is just 1 over x, and multiplied by p. So we need the antiderivative of this x to the n, so it'd be x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and we have dx. And this outside expression here is evaluated between 0 and 1. So let's do that first. If we put a 1 in here, we have the natural log of 1, which is 0. So that makes the entire expression equal to 0. And really, we'd have to take a limit as x approaches 0, since we can't evaluate the natural log at 0. It goes off to minus infinity. And since the natural log grows much slower than x to any power, we know that this expression is going to reach 0 much, much faster than this expression. So essentially, this entire expression evaluated at 0 is 0. So this goes away entirely, since it's equal to 0. And so we have minus, and we can bring out this n and the n plus 1. So the n over n plus 1 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n plus 1 divided by x, which is the x to the n multiplied by the natural log of n minus 1 of x dx. And notice that we reduce the exponent on the natural log by 1. And each time we apply integration by parts to this type of integral, it'll reduce this exponent by 1. So let's apply it again. This is still our q, and this is still our p prime. So we have minus n over n plus 1 multiplied by first we have the antiderivative of this times this function. So it's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times the natural log of n minus 1 of x evaluated between 0 and 1. And we're subtracting the integral from 0 to 1 of now the derivative of this q function. So the n minus 1 comes down in front, and we have the natural log of x to the n minus 2 power, 
all divided by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. So we divide by x, and this is multiplied by the antiderivative of x to the n. So it's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and we have a dx. And remember, both expressions are multiplied by this minus n over n plus 1. So now we just have to clean this up once more. So our integral i is equal to minus n over n plus 1 multiplied by this expression, which by the same logic we use to evaluate this expression, this one is also equal to 0. And so we have just minus, and we can bring out the n minus 1 and the divided by n plus 1. So minus n minus 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n plus 1 over x. We again have x to the n times the natural log of n minus 2 of x dx. And notice that each time we did this integration by parts, we were able to pull out this n plus 1 on the bottom. And the first time we got an n in the numerator, the second time we got an n minus 1. And if we did it a third time, we'd get an n minus 2, since this would just come down when you take its derivative. And that process would just continue. You'd next get multiplied by an n minus 3, then an n minus 4. And if we just carry this process out n times, we'd have an n minus n here, which is 0, and the natural log of x to the zero power is just one. So this would just go away. And so this numerator would just become n factorial. So let's write that. We'd have an n factorial divided by, and this n plus one, we're gonna have n of those. So this will be to the nth power. And with the minus signs, each time we're gonna get another minus sign. So it's gonna flip back and forth from positive to negative. And we can write this as minus 1 to the nth power. Notice this is our second time, and if we put a 2 in here for n, these negatives would just cancel out. And this is multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n, and this is just the natural log of x to the n minus n power, or the 0 power, and so the entire expression is just 1 times dx. And now we can actually evaluate this integral. So minus 1 to the nth times n factorial over n plus 1 to the nth multiplied by this integral, which becomes x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 evaluated between 0 and 1. If we put a 0 in here, we have 0 over n plus 1, which is just 0. So if we put a 1 in here, we'd have 1 to the n plus 1 power, which is just 1 divided by n plus 1. So in essence, we just get an extra n plus 1 here. So the integral i is simply equal to minus 1 to the n times n factorial divided by n plus 1 to the n plus 1, since we have one more of these than before. And recall from earlier that s the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x to the x dx, the sophomore stream problem, was equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the nth power over n factorial multiplied by that integral i. And now that we have a value for i, we can just substitute that in here into our s. So s is equal to the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n factorial times minus 1 to the n times n factorial all divided by n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. And what you can notice is that if you combine minus 1 to the n times minus 1 to the n, that you would add the exponents and get minus 1 to the 2n. And so for any 
value of n that you plug into there, it would be multiplied by 2, or in other words, it would be an even number. And negative 1 raised to an even power is always positive. So essentially these two terms cancel each other out, and we have an n factorial in the numerator and in the denominator. And so what we're left with is the sum um, n is 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power. And let's actually expand the sum. So if we put in 0, we'll have 0 plus 1, or 1, to the 1 power. So it would be 1 over 1 to the first, plus, now we put in a 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 2, and it's 2 here as well, so we'd have 1 over 2 squared, plus, now we put in a 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 plus 1 is 3 for the exponent, so you have 1 over 3 to the third, and you can keep going. The next one would be 1 over 4 to the fourth, plus 1 over 5 to the fifth, and so on, since this is an infinite sum.